Hey everybody, it's Ivy again. Uh, so I wanted to kind of preface uh, this video with a little bit of nostalgia. I just happen to have a few of these laying around. Uh, this is old Scry Magazine where, you know, you would uh, go in here and learn about magic. See, there's all stuff on magic. Um, and then we talk about sets that haven't even released yet. I mean, like Exodus and... Well, I think actually Urza Saga was just about coming out in this around this time period, but... You can kind of see it back when the Star Wars collectible card game was a thing, you know. That was actually competing with Magic at the time with Pokemon and everything. But I have these laying around. Figured people might want to see them. Because I've been playing Magic a long time. And this is when I started when I was a teenager. I was a lot younger. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing. When you go in here and I'm like, I looked up a lot. Let's look up a Lion's Eye Diamond. Seriously, you got to see this. Um, let's see. Okay, one second. But if you go through these, like Arabian Nights and all antiquities and legends, these cards are hundreds and hundreds of dollars now. But like, let's see. I mean, you can look at the prices on these. Look at that. I mean, imagine like getting these cards for that kind of prices now. Like, I think what is the most what is the most expensive card in Legends? Like, um, gosh, um, let's see. I know Cam the Candelabra of Tanos in uh, antiquities is worth a lot, right? Um, let's see, Candelabra should be, hmm, okay, it's $31 in here on its low and $42 on its high, it's like right there. Can you imagine getting that card for $40 and now it's like worth, what, like thousands? People just spent crazy amounts of money on these. Um, I mean, there's Fallen Empires, that was, that was like gonna be the greatest set ever, yeah, right. Uh, let's see if you can find Lion's Eye Diamond. I actually have one of those. I got it in a pack like a long time ago. But look at that. Lion's Eye Diamond. What does it say? Five dollars. Five dollars. Can you imagine? Isn't that card worth like 200 now or something? It was like 250 or whatever. Anyway, so I want to preface this little video, but you know what we're doing? We're gonna, we're gonna jump right into one of these. Um... This set uh, is obviously more Ravnica, so we could say it's the return to the return to the return to the return of Ravnica. Uh, and I've heard a uh, guy, it was that Alf Investments guy, he says that all the time, you know, Creepy Rudy and his floppy tacos and all that business. Well, anyway, it's another Ravnica set, obviously, because that's the block we're in now, is a Ravnica block. So we're just going to bust right into this box and take it apart, devour it, and see if we get anything good out of there. You know, maybe I'll get some Masterpiece Editions. Oh, oh yeah, right. They stopped doing that. So we're just going to open it up and see what's in there. All right. So it's just amazing how Magic has gone for so long and how many uh, sets there's been, how much improvement there's been. There's been some de-evolution, I would say. I'm thinking that some stuff isn't as good as it was, but... You know, that's my opinion. Some things are better than they were. I mean, some depends on what you want, what your perspective is and how you think about it, you know. But uh, let's just jump right into some cards, shall we? Um, all right, so we got, let's see. All right, so, sir, first we're going to hit some uncommons here. So what do we got? We got a Sage's Row Savant. Okay, whatever. Uh, Rubble Hulk Recluse. Knight of Soros, Plague White, Axe Bane Beast, Azorius Knight Arbiter, okay, Gruel Locket, okay, Frenzied Arcs, an Arcs, okay, never heard of an Arcs before, a Orzov Locket, Deface, and now we get to the uncommon. So Sphinx of New Prov, Vigilance, Flying, Spells Your Opponent's Cast. Uh, spells Your Opponent's Cast that targets Sphinx of New Prov costs two more to cast. Hmm. Makes it harder to get rid of them, I guess. Uh, gate Colossus. This spell costs one less to cast for each gate you control. Gate Colossus can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. Wow, okay. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under control, you may put gate colossus from your graveyard on top of your library. Wow, this guy never goes away then. But you gotta have eight mana to put him out. I suppose if you're playing a lot of gates, then what a... I guess a gate deck. Code of Constraint. Target creature gets negative four, negative zero until end of turn. Draw a card. Okay, what else? 
And an Immolation Shaman. This will be the rare. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land that isn't a mana ability, Immolation Shaman deals one damage to that player. That could get annoying real fast for people to play those kind of decks. Uh, okay, well, there we are. Fun stuff. All right. And let's go ahead and get the next one, see what we got going on here. I'm trying to get through these pretty quick, see what's, see what's going on with this set, right? And, uh, okay, so we got Spear, Spew, Stew, jeez, Spear, Spewer. Say that 15 times fast, right? Uh, 10th District Veteran, Noxious, Grudion, Stony Strength, Spectacle, or, I'm um, sorry, Skewer of Critics, Growth, Spiral, Clear the Mind, Sphinx's Insight, Grotesque Demise. I suppose that's a, shit, that's a crappy way to go. Creatures you control get plus one, plus three, until end of turn, untap them. Rally rally to battle. Warzov Enforcer, Death Touch, Afterlife. That's a new mechanic. Afterlife is something that I think just appeared in the set, so that's pretty cool. And we got a Cinder Vines. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Cinder Vine deals... One damage to that player. Pay one, sacrifice Cinder Vines, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Cinder Vines deals two damage to that permanent controller. Pretty cool. And a guild gate. Alrighty. Oh, I don't know if that there. Okay, so looks like we've got some pretty good stuff going on, huh? I did already open one of these um, off camera, and I did get some um some shock land so that's that's always a good thing i assume i'm probably gonna get more in here but we'll see so we'll just kind of run through these commons real quick and see what pops out of them okay we got a dispose and deploy rumbling ruin clan guild mage and hero of precinct one whenever you cast a multicolored spell create a one one white human creature token Guess that's pretty cool if you're running a multicolored deck, I suppose. That's pretty neat. All right. All right, let's keep going and see if we got anything amazing here. No box stopper in this one, unfortunately. Oh well. I know there's like a super mythic edition of this. And I'm like, well, that's that's great, but I think it's hard to get it, you know, from what I hear. It's you gotta have I think it was something to do with eBay this time instead of Hasbro Direct. And I'm like, really? Is there a reason why this is a thing? I mean, is it, I guess Wizard, Wizards of the Coast is looking for something that's more profitable. Maybe that's their, their game. I don't know. Okay, Glass of the Guild Pact. Multicolored creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Pretty useful. Back in the day, remember the multicolored decks? Like, you could even go back as far as, like, Oh gosh, I don't know. Multicolor has always been a thing, but I suppose if you figure the Alara block was was big for that stuff. You know, a lot of people were running five color decks back then. But even a, a two color deck could benefit from that, you know. So that's technically multicolor, so. Um, Spear Spewer. Um, let's just run through these commons real quick. I think probably most people know what these do. Let's see if we can get to the good stuff, right? Um, okay, eyes everywhere. Um, then we're gonna say, what's this? Oh, Collusion Colossus, okay. And then Flames of the Raised Boar. Prime Speaker Vanifar is our first mythic. Okay, sacrifice another creature, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one, plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. That's pretty cool. Alrighty then. Um, let's see. First mythic. Can't complain about that, huh? I'm not sure how popular that card's going to be, but you never know some of these, you know. Um, I always wonder what's going to happen eventually to the market for some of these. I mean, ma magic has become like a weird stock market and i see these cards the old ones worth thousands of dollars and i'm like wow i wish i wasn't like a kid when those were worth something when they weren't or they weren't worth anything i guess and i could have if i could afford them back then i would have bought them you know just it was those those kind of things 
All right, Vindictive Vampire. Looks pretty useful. Always good to have for a vampire deck. Thunder Shaman. Cavalcade of Calamity. Okay, that sounds pretty pretty rough. Sphinx of Foresight. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep. Flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Oh, that's pretty useful. Good way to sift through your deck for good stuff, huh? Scrying. I'll never complain about scrying. Okay, let's see what's next. We got a lot of cards to get through here. I'll try to keep this under a half an hour. I like to keep these under a half an hour because, you know, why not? I've watched some of these and the person will just be open, opening for like an hour and a half and I just, I just end up skipping through to the, to the, um, usually like the rares or, or whatever. I think Ultimate Masters is probably the, most, the best one to watch right now to people open those. And uh, Ultimate Masters boxes are now going for 370 bucks. So, yeah, if you didn't buy it back in the day, well, but I don't know what to say anymore. It's like, kind of missed the boat on that one, unfortunately. I know I bought a couple boxes of that because I knew that was going to happen. Because I, I don't know if they're going to, they'll probably make more sets like that, you know, with reprints and stuff. That's the wizard for you. If they can make a dollar out of it, they're going to do it. They'll come out with more form of vault editions or... They'll put those cards in Commander or something. So, you know, I don't see the end of the world happening for, like, old cards. And there's a reserve list is a thing. You know, some of these videos I hear them talking about reserve list cards and how they just, you know, how people are investing in those things. Like, they're trading stocks or commodities or something. And I'm like, wow, people. Never would have thought in a million years magic would be like that kind of a thing when I was 12. Uh, Sphinx of the Guild Pack is all colors. Okay, what else? Uh, Macrob Mockery. Macabre Mockery. Jeez. Oh, That's pretty cool. And then, oh, hey, what do you know? A Planeswalker. Cool. Exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled this way. Exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. Kesa Orzov Usurper deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life. Suppose that could be useful at times. Nice. And a foil. Wow, that was a pretty good pack. It would have been amazing if it was like a foil. I can imagine it was a foil myth thing. Um, all right, that's cool. Nice. Good stuff. All right. Well, I have a few of the Planeswalkers from this set already, but no, I did not have that one, so I can't complain about that. Um, okay, Civic Stalwart, whatever, these are all comments, so we're just going to run through them and see. Hmm. I did a, a pre-release for this and, and drafted a um, pretty good deck. I won I won three of my um, matches. I lost one, so, you know, it was nice. I got some free cards out of the deal, so I'll never complain about getting free cards, right? The game shop I go to is actually this one here, although you can't really see it on the on the video because it's off the screen, but I go to Cool Stuff Games just around the corner from me, and they're they're pretty nice. They're really cool people. Really, really good company. Very friendly to, like, anybody and everybody, and they accept everybody who, for who they are, and different. It's all kinds of people in there when I go in there. Older people, younger people, people with disabilities, transgender people... Um, all kinds of different things. Such a nice game store. I used to run a Dungeons and Dragons campaign there sometimes. Um, actually, I'm a DM, believe it or not. It's a thing I do once in a while. I'm actually going to post some stuff about Dungeons and Dragons here pretty soon, but, you know, right now I'm just doing magic. Uh, let's see. Lumbering Battlement. Vigilance. When Lumbering Battlement enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-token creatures to the you control until it leaves the battlefield. Lumbering Battlement gets plus two, plus two for each card exile that way. Okay, that's cool. And, oh well. All right. So what do you do with your foils? I have lots and lots of, I guess, bulk foils, like commons or uncommon foils. So what do you do with them? I guess you trade them or you make a cube out of them from what I hear, but I don't know. So maybe in the comments, tell me what you do with all your bulk foils. Do you trade them? Do you play them? 
I usually just keep them around. Occasionally I'll be building a deck. I'm like, huh, I can't find such and such card. Or I'll replace a card from my one of my decks with a foil. I just goes, I don't know. Why not? Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Rhythm of the Wild. Solana Wayfinder. Dovin's Acuity. And Unbreakable Formation. Creatures you control gain indestructible to end of turn. If you cast a spell during your main phase, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. I suppose I could get useful real fast if you're playing that kind of that kind of game. All right. Let's see if I can try to get through all these packs in like 15 minutes. Boy, I guess we're going to have to just kind of speed through the commons and say, okay. Let's see. Let's go right to that. So we got Scrabbling Claws. This is a neat little card. This was uh, reprinted in a commander set recently. So we're going to... Say that's pretty good. We got the... Oh, okay. Where's the... There it is. Okay. Rampage of the Clans. So you can see what it does. Pretty useful. All right. I will go ahead and... I'll probably do a better sword here after this video so I can put them into my collection. I usually keep these. This is not like a thing where I see some of these YouTube people channel. They open up cards that their patrons buy from them or something. And I'm like, really? That's a thing. I just buy them myself and keep them and play with them. I mean, that's what you play this game for, right? I mean, although there's people that are big investors in this thing, and I'm like, they're in it for the money, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. I mean, I'd probably sell a few of my extras or trade them out or something, but, you know, it's still it's just a game. At the end of the day, it's just a fun game to play. Let's see here. Um, what do we got? This is a uncommon cheeks camera. Deploy and depose, an uncommon double card. Those double cards are always weird to me, but what else? We had another double card as a... No, oh, okay. Well, we know what that is. I'll read more into that later on. Hopefully, if we get some more Mythics. It would be nice if I get maybe another Planeswalker out of the set or something something worth writing home about, as they say. Oh, okay. Scrabbling Claws again. And that, and then of course the rare is Tome of the Guild Pact. Did not have, I don't have this card yet. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. Add one mana of any color. That's kind of cool. That, that might be useful in certain commander deck formats, so probably put it in a thing. See what happens to that. All right. So what do you guys think of this set? I don't know if you're this far into this video watching me open all these packs and shoot the breeze as they say but what do you think about this set do you think that ra this this particular ravnica block is going to have like some of the staying power that the old one did i mean the old one not return to ravnica the the old ravnica from what was it 2004 or five or something it's from a bit of a ways back so our defense another double card warrant and warden that's a thing okay and that's that. All right. Good. I just recently did a really good commander deck, which I think I'll probably put in a video here pretty soon. Um, the deck has a, um, what is it? Uh, it's a theme base. It's white. I used Darien, um, King of Keldor, I believe that's how you say that. And he... Um, really good deck i mean people it just makes tons of tokens just tokens like crazy deputy of detention and a guild gate well, i know one thing i'm gonna have a million guild gates it's like every single pack comes with a guild gate instead of a basic land which i could see that being useful but i suppose in draft i know when i was playing the um pre-release i obviously used the guild gates but that's the only time i ever used some was in like a draft that's about all I can really... Sure, they, they do land. is kind of cool. I know that there is a card that allows your permanents to come in untapped, so then it becomes way better. Another one of these double cards. They're always trying to... I'm sure I could find a use for these at some point, but I've never been a huge fan of double cards, but I don't know. Some of them are good. I do have a couple, and a couple of decks that I did at one point. The double... Double cycle cards, whatever you want to call them. 
All right, a Hazda officer. Okay, well, he's our common. We're going to just jump through these commons real quick. It's nothing, you know, I wish I could afford some of the cards that are out there. You can buy boxes of the old stuff, but man, is it expensive. You got to be wealthy to afford some of the things that are out there. You know, in Magic, I just can't believe this game got to be worth so much money. But maybe that's because it's such a versatile game and has so many different combinations of, of things and decks you can build. And I mean, I know right now I have about 12 different commander decks that I made. And I've got a couple, you know, just regular 60 card modern decks and they're they're okay. Um, I wouldn't say I'm as good of a modern player as I am on commander for some reason. I guess it's just easier to play commander because mass manipulation in control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers. Seriously? Wow, okay, that could be useful. I can see that card probably gonna be worth some money. It looks like it's pretty useful. Anything that looks useful, you know that's gonna go up in value. Unless they reprint it, which is whatever. Alright, All right, so let's just jump right to the rear. Well, I guess we'll look at the uncommons. Why not? Clear the stage. Gates of Blaze. Syndicate Guild Mage. And Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones. There's a very funny uh, card in this set, um, the alligator one. I think I'll probably skip through it here, but I think it's a common or an uncommon. And it's got a little story about, um, I think it's got a story about a rat and a zombie. And it's hilarious. If you find the card, I will stop on that one just so we can we can read that one and just get a laugh. It'll pop up here soon enough, I'm sure. It's not a, not a very difficult card. Uh-huh, whatever. Act of Treason, another one of those. Those are... It's the kind of deck you can build around that. As an additional cost, guess the spell sacrifice two creatures, draw three cards. Hmm, card draw in black. I suppose that could have its uses. Okay. And oh, it looks like you got a foil mass manipulation and a plaza of harmony. Plaza of harmony deals the enters the battlefield. You gain control of two more gates. If you control two more gates or more gates, you gain three life. I had Okay, I guess if you're playing a gate deck, that could be a thing. Um, a foil mass manipulation. Gain control of X target creatures. We know about that. That's kind of neat. Um, that might be worth something someday. Who knows? If the card is definitely popular and, and keeps going. We'll see what happens, all right? All right, let's see what we got here in these packs. I don't have too many more to go. I'd say about maybe 12. You know, we'll see if we get something amazing here. Vampires. Plague White. Let's see. Rectos. Ah. Hey, well, we see what that is. We already know we got a fet um, a uh, shock land. Let's see. Here we got uh, Aeromunculus. Okay. Rectos Locket. White Wing Spy. Um, Rhythm of the Wild. Rumbling Ruin. And we've got our Breeding Pool. That's a good card. Take that and a common foil. And okay. All right. That was actually a pretty good pack. It wasn't I don't know, probably the these the breeding pool is worth a few bucks, I guess. I think with the amount of prints of those cards now in the set, I don't think they're gonna be worth like crazy money, but if they don't print them for a while, then they'll go back on value and people will want them again. I could see people wanting that kind of thing. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, so this would be meaning shield. Wow, look at that shield. All right, combine guild mage and precognitive perception. Draw three cards. If you cast the spell during your main phase instead, scry three, then draw three cards. Kind of cool. And a guild gate. All right. Yeah, so, you know, I watch some of the YouTubers, you know, on Magic YouTubers. Some of these folks are so pessimistic and just like negative, negative, negative magic. I think it's just drama. It's just, it makes people watch their YouTubes because there's so much drama. Me, I just open cards, talk about magic, growing up, playing this game or just life in general, I guess. You know, just whatever. This is a pretty relaxing thing. I do magic. I, you know, play magic cards because it's just it's relaxing. It's easy. You know, some people take it so seriously. It's just a game, people. 
Hey, how a hallowed fountain. How about that? I actually didn't get one of these yet, so I'll take it. Didn't have one yet. And crap. All right, so hallowed fountain. So I know with that, I do believe I have all of the Shockland. I think I have every single Shockland that came out between this set and uh, the previous Ravnica that just came out. Okay, hey, the foil back there. Hey, cool. Another foil is always a good thing. Commons. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get through this. That, that. Simic Ascendancy. All right, then. And a Gilligate with foil. Okay, what else? I have so many of those. Like from older versions of Ravnica. Just Gilligate. Tons of Gilligate. From Return to Ravnica. Original Ravnica. The previous version of this set. And then Ravnica Allegiance. I have so many Guild Gates. And Foil Guild Gates. Alrighty. Uh, oh, hey, our next um, Mythic Angel of Grace. When Angel of Grace enters the battlefield, intended of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Useful. Oh, okay, and crap. Let's see. Okay. All right, and let's see. I don't have much more time, so I'm going to try to speed through these last packs. I don't have too many more to go. Maybe like seven or eight or something. So we'll just kind of run through these real quick and see what we get. Troll breed. Okay. Junk. Okay. And Theater of Horrors. Okay, then. Theater of Horrors. Must be pretty horrible. Like Doctor's Horrible. Doctor Horrible sing along the log. I don't know. I remember it, damn it. I don't know if y'all do, but I remember a lot of cool things that people don't know about anymore. I remember like the original memes from back. I don't know if y'all remember what was it? Um E Bombs World and New Newgrounds. Yep, that was my jam back in the day. Even before that there was stuff, but that was those were like the first like mainstream ones, I guess. It's the maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Growth Chamber Guardian. Okay, you can read what he does. He's he's useful, I suppose. And that's a foil uncommon. Would mean it would be nice to get like another foil uh, rare in the set. Right, better yet, a foil mythic. Geez, foil mythic. Um, maybe I think there's like a, a worm or a hide. I don't know what it is. Some kind of weird worm in the set that's worth something. Need to have one of those. Okay. Let's just go through these and con common commons. Okay, so get her eel. Whatever. These are those. And the rare is the stomping ground. Hey, what do you know? I'll take it. Another another one of those. So that's a good thing. Another shock land. Well, I don't think I'll have Shocklands till the end of time in these two boxes that I opened of this. Yeah, I can't complain about Shocklands. And Biomancer is familiar. All right, then. suppose that's good. I'll have to look that one up later and see if I can do anything with it. I know the Planeswalkers are pretty good in the set. There's a few good cards that were just stood out when I looked at them. And it, you know, usually after I do this, I just start going through them and saying, hmm, what decks do I already have? Is this going to improve the deck I have already? Or is this, can I make a deck that does something neat with this? And sometimes, let's see, Smoldering Tithe. Okay, I guess that's kind of cool. You can get some, get some mana growth there with that. All right. Former packs. Let's see what we got. Come on, foil mythic. Let's do this. I mean, nowadays I really like the almond cat set. I think you can still buy this on online in some places for the same price it was when it first came out, and it's kind of cool. It's just you know, for that set, it's almost like mythic or bust. The cards aren't really worth hardly anything. Don't know why. I have a feeling they might be someday, but just not right now. But I like Egyptian stuff. It's really cool. And let's see. 
the box off. Can you imagine if they have an error pack? Hey, what the hell? There's like a car with a ding in it. Really, people? Wizards quality control just went and decided to look the other way on that one, huh? Hey, another... Cool. This is a really good box so far. I got two planeswalkers. Nice. Got Domri Chaos Bringer. And we're running out of time, so I'm not going to read what he does. You can kind of read right on the on the on the text there. You can pause the video if you want and read that. I'm sure you can go on a website too. There's a lot of magic websites that have the cards on them, but it's kind of neat to see what surprises come out of these boxes. Like so far, I'd say uh, this is a winner of a box. I definitely got whatever this thing was like. What? 90 bucks or something. Looks like I got my money back. Lavinia. Okay. I won't complain that I like lost money on this one because it doesn't look like I did. Would have been nice to get a foil mythic. Or one of those same walkers foiled. Boy, that would be a day, right? And then, you know, if I got that, that'd be amazing. But, uh, this Aureus Okay, whatever. Comments. There's our rare amplifier. Amplifier. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think it's play on words. Amplifier. Alright, last pack. What do you think's in here? It's going to be a foil mythic. Imagine if it was, right? But it'd be a mythic and a foil mythic next to it. That would just be ridiculous. Okay, what do we got here? Are we going to really we'll just jump right into the end of this thing and just get it over with? Well, we got a foil. It wasn't mythic, but that's okay, I guess. We'll take the foil. And the last rare is Catacomb. No, it's not. Oh, that's the crocodile I wanted to talk to you about. Read that. I am Sewer King, said Rat. I am quick and cunning, and I know every tunnel. No, I am King, said Zombie. I am cold and deadly, and, and no rock can harm me. Then Croc came and ate them both. Such is life, right? Of Mice and Zombies. The story of Mice and Zombies. A great card. I just, just love the flavor text on that one. It's hilarious. And let's see. Okay, well, there's the rare. Um, Gruel Spellbreaker. Eh, riot Mechanic, I guess. That'll get used. I'm just not sure what format will use that a lot. But I'm sure at some point it will get some use. So that wraps this uh, box up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this was a good box. Uh, I think I probably got my money's worth out of this one if you want to really count it like that. And um, there we go. So let's look at are the spoils here. And let's see. We got, this is what we got. We got Domri. We got a Stomping Ground. We got an Angel of Grace. A Hallowed Fountain. Breeding Pool. A Foil Mouse Manipulation. Kesa. And Prime Speaker Vanifar. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Adios.